everyone, it's John from What Up, and welcome back to another video. Today we're talking Wheel of Time Season 2 and Season 3 news. So, we have a lot to get through. There's been a bunch of news lately about both seasons, and we're going to cover a ton of different things. So this may be a longer news video than normal, so buckle up. The first thing we'll talk about today is going to be the deleted scene from Season 1, Episode 1, featuring Tam and Egwene. That was showcased at WatCon last year, sort of as a special treat to people who attended the, the uh, convention, but no one else got to see it. It wasn't until just recently that Sony and Amazon released it, and um, the public got to see it. So I'm going to show that here after the spoiler warning, and then we're going to talk just a bit about it, including the reasons why I think it shouldn't have been cut from that episode. It was an absolutely amazing scene. We're going to talk just a bit about the start dates for filming for Season 3, some casting calls for Season 3, who is back in Prague for the filming of Season 3, uh, there's a ton of different things we're going to go through today, including Roseman Pike just won an award for her audiobooks. Yes, she does do the Wheel of Time audiobooks. If you follow the channel, you probably know that, but if you don't, well, now you do, and she just recently won an award for that. We're going to talk about that today, too. There's a ton of things we're going to go through today, and it's, it's pretty exciting because we're starting to see a slow ramp up in news and leaks for Season 2 and Season 3, which to me means that maybe just maybe we'll see an official start to the, the campaign for season two sooner rather than later uh, my money's on we'll probably start to see a trailer sometime in june or july and we'll probably see the season released around the same time that season one was released in november but that's just a guess we'll talk about that later on in the video so new to the channel you don't know what we do here we cover wheel of time show news that should be pretty obvious at this point uh, if you like that sort of thing make sure you subscribe to the channel and if you like the video of course, click the like button because YouTube algorithm likes to reward videos with high likes. And uh, I am trying to make it to 20,000 subscribers. So if you haven't subscribed yet, do me a favor, click that button. Uh, if you like Wheel of Time, if you like fantasy, this is a channel for you. Now, I do have to give a bit of a spoiler warning, mainly because we're going to talk about elements of 1, 2, and 3, uh, seasons 1, 2, and 3 rather, as well as books 1, 2, and 3. So... Spoiler warning, in today's video we're covering aspects of Season 1, Season 2, and Season 3 of Sony and Amazon's Wheel of Time show. So if you haven't seen the first season, uh, and are waiting in expectation for the second and third season, and you don't want anything spoiled that may happen, we're going to cover those topics in today's video. Also, if you haven't read the first three books of the Wheel of Time series by Robert Jordan, that's The Eye of the World, The Great Hunt, and The Dragon Reborn, I may spoil certain plot points and character elements from those, although they'll be very light spoilers for those books. Alright, with that being said, let's get on to the video. Too early for breakfast? Never too early for your mum's bread. He left before I woke. She loved you, you know, my wife. Do you remember her at all? I remember her eyes. So blue, just like Grant's. Her hair was red like his. When your mum and dad were rebuilding the inn after the fire, they sent you up mountain to stay the summer with us. And she'd spend all day with you, playing with you, holding you, as if you were her very own daughter. You must miss her so much. I do. Of course I do. But there's something about death that's clean, final. And a clean cut, even if it's three times as deep, will always heal better than something ragged. Something messy and raw. You have his heart in your hand, girl. Be gentle with it. Is all I have. All right, so there you have it. That's the scene that was cut from season one, episode one. And when I say the scene, it's it's one of many, many scenes that were cut from the first season. Um, and it's one of many scenes that I think would have made the first season a whole lot more richer in character development. Um, and I really enjoyed it. Now, why was the scene cut? Well, I, I can't really give you an explanation as to why, uh, other than the fact that we do know for a fact that Amazon really likes eight episodes under an hour of runtime per episode because they have a ton of metrics from many other different shows that all seem to showcase when people will shut the show off, when people will not go back to the show, when people seem to pause the show. 
when people will finish a series and not finish a series, and their metrics have stated pretty much that eight episodes under an hour is is pretty much the sweet spot for uh, a certain type of series. That doesn't mean it always works, and it doesn't mean that you can't always add more to it later on, uh, but I think that especially with the very first season of a fantasy show, they wanted to stick with their cookie-cutter formula that they have for this type of show, and it's something that they truly, truly believe in. Now, I've heard that season two will be pretty much the same. Ray Judkins has gone on record and said that we will see a few more minutes per episode, uh, but I want to stress that I've heard from my sources that when he says a few more minutes or the episodes will be slightly longer, that's it. They're going to be slightly longer. They're not going to be the hour and 15 minutes, hour and a half, hour and 45 minute episodes that we've seen from shows like The Last of Us. Um, and we're not going to get more than eight. From what I understand, we're still only getting eight episodes for the second season. Of course, all that can change in post, and they're still going through post-production right now, and we don't know when we're going to get it. But... Um, because of that, we miss scenes like this. Now, Michael uh, McElhatton, who plays Tamal Thor, is an amazing actor. He is phenomenal he's really good at drama he just absolutely robs the stage from everyone else when he's there um and the pure raw emotion that he was managing to portray in that minute and a half clip about how much he loved his son um and how he was scared that Egwene would hurt him um it was it was absolutely amazing to see now again if you were at WatCon last year you did get to see this clip other than that we only got to see it right now and I think there's a reason for that. I think by showcasing clips like this, especially if they're incredibly good, a lot of the fandom and people who just enjoy the show that are mainly, or maybe not part of the Wheel of Time fandom, uh, are going to stop and think that, why why was this cut? I personally, other than length and runtime, I can't think of a reason this was cut. Other than maybe, just maybe, there was a small nod to the fact that the Rand might have been the dragon in, in and around this and the way they talk about his mom, um... Maybe. Then uh, that's a huge stretch for me. So, no, Amazon wanted to keep that a mystery until later on in the season, uh, which which they did for the most part for people who haven't read the books. So, again, amazing scene. I want to hear your comments down below. Let me know what you thought of the scene and let me know um, if you would have liked to see this included. I mean, it was only another minute and a half, but we know that they cut a lot out of the first episode uh, and all the episodes, really. We know they cut uh, the, the escape through the waterwood uh, when Rand and, and Tam were talking about fever dreams. We've seen photos of that from Rafe Judkins and the, the production crew showing that it was filmed. We didn't get to see it, of course, because what would that do? Well, that would ruin the mystery. Um, but it would have been an amazing scene to see because more of Tam, in my opinion, is better. And one of the great things I think about the episode squish, so we're only getting eight seasons at most, um, and they're squishing everything down and cutting things out, is we're going to see Tam come back earlier. And I think that we might see Tam more central to the plot line of uh, season three, in the Battle for the Two Rivers than he was in uh, in the books. I think we're going to see a lot more Tam in that season because, let's face it, he's an amazing actor, and it's something that we all want to see. All right, so the next bit of news comes to us from WattSeries.com, and I've left a link to their website down below in the description box if you folks want to check it out. And it has to do around a casting that they reported uh, at the end of last year. Now, they, they reported that Lily Bonda was going to be a character in Season 2 of Sony and Amazon's Wheel of Time show, but they didn't really know the character's name. So we didn't know who she was playing, just that she was going to be in the show. Now, her Spotlight CV has recently been updated to showcase uh, the character's name, uh, Mulan. I probably pronounced that wrong, uh, and I do apologize if I, if I did, but uh, that is the person that ran the Dame Quarters in Falma. Now, uh, she's an old Suldom, and uh, she does have some interactions with the main characters in the book. So in The Great Hunt, she's the one who takes Min's coat and breaches from her and burns them and puts her into a dress because it's it's what's appropriate for a young lady, according to her. Um, so at the very least, I know we're going to see Dame and Falma because we've seen behind-the-scenes footage of battles and explosions. I've shown them here on the channel, uh, amongst other things. And now that we know that we have the head of the Dame Quarters in Fallout, we're probably going to see Egwene's capture. We're probably going to see um, how they break down Aes Sedai. It's going to be very, very interesting. I think they're going to introduce um, some aspects of the Shan Chan a little bit earlier than we'll see in the book series, because let's face it, they showed up at the end of book two, and then they were just sort of kind of floating around in the background for quite some time. I think in the show, we're going to see them as more of an antagonist much quicker. 
All right, so the next thing we're talking about is an award that Roseman Pike had just recently won at the Audis. Now, the Audis are an audiobook award show, and she won the award for Best Female Narrator. Now, what's interesting to note here is that she just recently jumped into the foray of doing audiobooks uh, with The Eye of the World, um, and she's done The Great Hunt, and the forthcoming Dragon Reborn, which comes out the first week of June, which is when a lot of people thought that we might see Season 2. They might co coincide with one another, that... The audiobook for The Dragon Reborn would drop in June, and then we would see the Season 2 drop shortly after that, which is sort of what happened with Season 1. The audiobooks uh, for The Eye of the World dropped just prior to Season 1 releasing. I don't think that's going to happen right now because as we're in early April and we don't have a trailer yet, a release date in June is likely not going to happen at this point, but there's always hope. One, one doesn't know. Now, the original audiobook uh, readers are uh, Michael Kramer and Kate Reading. They did an absolutely fantastic job. Now, I've said it here on the channel a number of times before, audiobooks are not my thing. I don't like them. Uh, I find that they're not quite fast enough because I read very, very fast. I kind of I absorb what's on the page. However, I know a lot of people out there really, really enjoy them, and they do help with pronunciation, which is something I have problems with. Um, but I would definitely check these audiobooks out uh, because they are... Uh, I wouldn't say they're better than Michael uh, and, and Kate's audiobooks, but they are certainly a, a little bit different and very interesting. All right, so now we're shifting gears a little bit into Season 3 news. Now, Geeky Area recently tweeted this out. She's from uh, WattsRace.com, and she is a fantastic source of news. So if you do have Twitter, please go follow her over on Twitter. She shares all kinds of really cool Wheel of Time stuff all the time, and she's an absolutely amazing person. Uh, so this is the first special extras that are being cast for Season 3 of The Wheel of Time. Now, they're looking for musicians of non-European descent, drum, flute, lyre, and horn. A uh, male painter between the ages of 40 to 75 for a scene on April 18th will portray a street painter. Um, and I think that's really very cool. So Season 3 we know is going to center around the Shadow Rising. So essentially that's, that's what Rave Judkins has said a number of different times, uh, although we don't know if that's it. If it's just going to be the Shadow Rising or if they're going to add more books onto that. We know the battle for the two rivers in the Shadow Rising will be a large part of Season 3. But, let's face it, they only have eight seasons-ish to do the full 14 books. Um, and uh, they're going to squish some things in there. So, I'm going to say we're going to see more than just the Shadow Rising in Season 3. We're going to see more than just the battle for two rivers. This here gives me uh, either Kyrian vibes, maybe Camelin vibes. Um, depending on where we're at in the story and what's going on. Um, but I want to hear your thoughts down below. Where do you think we're going to see a bunch of musicians and a street painter, uh, especially for the opening few shots that they're going to film for Season 3? Now, why am I saying the opening few shots? Well, that has something to do with, with um, this. We're looking at, quite possibly, April 18th being the very first day of shooting for The Wheel of Time Season 3, uh, which I think is very, very neat. Um, because that means that in a few short weeks, we could possibly start seeing leaks from Season 3. We may know more about Season 3 soon than we will about Season 2. We may more know more about Season 3's plotline than Season 2's very soon, depending on the number of leaks and what goes on. Which brings me to my next statement. If you happen to know anything about the film schedule, about the filming, about the locations, about the cast, crew, anything and everything to do with the Season 3 of Wheel of Time, or beyond, or even Season 2 stuff, drop me a line. I want to hear from you. So I have an email in my About section. I'm available on Twitter. I'm available on uh, Instagram. Please drop me a line. Let me know uh, what you know about the, the filming uh, stuff for Season 3. I know a lot of you that watch this channel are locals in Prague, in the Czech Republic, and you're privy to some things because you see what's going on. You see things in your local paper. You're just out and about, and you happen to see filming stuff. Let me know. I want to hear from you folks because, let's face it, it's pretty much the only way we're going to get news about Season 3 out there is if people like you folks come to uh, either Watt Series or myself. Anyway, um, all of that being said, the last piece of news I want to cover today is this. Some of the cast are actually back in Prague right now, so this goes part and parcel with the April 18th start date. Now, we know that a lot of the production team, a lot of the writing team, a lot of the, the uh, crew uh, in different uh, locations and whatnot have been already scouted and set up for Season 3. People are already back in Prague and have been back in Prague for quite some time, but we haven't seen many of the main cast that don't already live there show up. Now, Aula Smart, who plays Avienda, she's there. She's uh, showcasing her welcome gift when she shows up in Prague. So... Of course, of course, we can't help but speculate that, yes, this the, the filming is going to happen very, very soon. And this goes hand in hand with what I just said. If you folks are in Prague, if you're in the Czech Republic, if you're in any of the filming areas, I want to hear from you folks because there's a lot to, to be found out just from being in the area. Face it, I know. Uh, in my particular area, they shoot a lot of Amazon, Netflix, uh, and Disney shows. Um, 
unfortunately, I've lobbied really hard to have the Wheel of Time come here, but it's fallen on deaf ears. Um, but usually know a whole lot about it long before it ever releases if you're in the area. So I want to hear from you folks. Anyway, thank you so very much for sticking with me today. I did promise you it'd be a long news video, and it absolutely was. And I'm hoping to get these out more often now because, let's face it, with Season 3 starting on the horizon, that's when the real news starts is when they're filming a season. So thank you so very much for sticking with me here to the very end. And here's to many more.